All right, everyone, we are live again. Dynasty Tamir, Search for a Guru. And I have the good brother, you know, Wednesday nights. We rock. We uh we gonna we rise up on Wednesday we nights. Rise up. We gonna rise up tonight. We gonna rise up. Just like a lot of people are rising up against the BAIO. Lord yeah, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. got um uh, Kala the Genesis on with us. And um tonight's yeah. topic is the burden of pan-African unity. Is it only on the diaspora? And this is a great topic, um, uh, Kyla. The reason why you really don't hear a lot of African nations speaking on Pan African unity. I mean, if they are, it's just for people on the continent, and it's not necessarily including a lot of times people the diaspora. Oh, I, I see. This is what I was talking about for years. You got to pick up on words. Hey, do, I, do, I to, do I need to mute? Uh yeah no not right now we're good we're, okay go ahead now we're, now we're not at one but check this out this is what I've been saying for years right when people talk about when you hear Africans about we got so many Africans in the diaspora right what they're talking about is refugees students and everything like that they're not talking about, see the the political correctness in the uh, places like that the International Monetary Fund the World Bank and all these world NGOs right they have to define they do have to decide to define Africans as anyone born on a continent so if you're a white south african right and you live in let's say in canada you are considered part of the african diaspora think about that you know you are part of the african diaspora if you're an indian person born in africa right and you live in the united states you're part of the african diaspora so therefore it's a very vague and abstract term african diaspora what we at the baio is doing is being specific by defining who we are what we say is pan-africanism and, and go by those definitions, right? And we make it easy for other people, black people who want to get involved in the movement to, to sort of lock into us. So why are people opposed to the BAIO? I have no idea. We're defining who we are. We're not saying uh, everybody's in Africa. We're talking about black people, descendants of slaves. And if you believe that the slave descendants have an I, I, I identity, why would you be opposed to that? You know, everybody else is. The people in China, do you think they are apologizing for the land and the resources they're taking right now out of Africa? No, of course not. They're going to keep taking and taking and taking until you come to physically remove them. But the bottom line, we have this divide now. Well, when you come to Africa, there's all these prerequisites. You can't do this. You can't do that. You all can't right. say this way. You got to sit this way. You got to drink this way. That's the uh, disclaimers. Yeah, you got all these disclaimers and everything like that. But when you come to other people, they're oh, just come right on in. Not only that, it, it, Africans have a, a history of inviting people in. You know, they don't have to invade anymore. Tell me, Europeans didn't invade Africa. They came there. Just came there to start setting up government, setting up shop. And next thing you know, well, why is that railway being built? Well, nobody said we could. You know, and next thing you right. want to go to war and rise up and after they've already established themselves and everything. So, so, so therefore, what we're saying basically in the Black African Infrastructure Organization, and may, re remind me, Remind everybody that you know the words of the college genesis do not necessarily reflect the views of the Black African Infrastructure Organization. These words are mine and mine alone. I don't speak for the organization, and we are not a monolith. You know what I'm saying? We are not a monolith. You know, we're all different uh, individuals. We all have different ideologies. We all that thing, but we all believe in one thing: that land, infrastructure, nationhood, and we should have a nation of our own, and we should have satellite communities in America and satellite communities throughout the world. That's no different than the Chinese do. There's no different than the Jews do and everything. Why is it that we always got to be open to everybody? Why can't we basically bunker down and, and bond together? And people say, well, well, why don't you guys just go there and just blend in? I'm saying, look, let me give you this. I'll say something controversial. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and say it. Take your time. Out. Everybody that I see. People who are watching, please hit that like button as you hit the, uh, as you come to the chat. All right, go ahead. Yeah, people go, people uh, go to the continent, right? And I know people now, 10, I've been on the continent 10 years, and they're still doing the same damn I'm not talking about anybody specifically, so anybody listening to this, don't get offended, right? Yeah, we're still trying to get this program open. I'm saying, well, what's holding up? Is it a white man? No. See, I said, are you talking to the government officials? Well, I had a conversation with them one time at the market and whatnot. So you mean tell me you're in a black country where black people uh, give you the A, yay or nay, yes or no, and you still, you have less accomplished in Africa as a black person than you would if you came to the United States. You come to the uh, state of Virginia, you can start a business overnight. You know what I'm saying? Right. I came to the state of Virginia when I was 22 years old and I had a business within six months. Just went in and opened, okay, 
here's my business license, blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, I'm in business. You know, why does it take you 20 years uh, and, and you don't still have anything accomplished? You know, well, you know, the laws and everything are different here. So this is why we talk about building infrastructure. We mm -hmm. want to know where we stand. We want clarity when we talk about doing business. Or I, I'm not going to tell anybody to go to, your, go to your particular country. You know, and, uh, and like I said, I had a brother now, you know, now that the, I have these people inboxing me from all over the continent. We're here with this opportunity. Look, don't tell me about no damn opportunity in Africa. Give me specifics. You know, I want everything specific. Give me contact names. Give me right. uh, everything, you know, specific. That's what the BAL is all about. We're going to micromanage this thing down to a T. So when people be able to come to us one day, they'll be able to say, okay, well, geez, you know, okay, I got a degree in this. You know, okay, there's openings right here. You see a lot of Indians going here and everything. Here's a contact person. Let me see if I can put my uh, 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 my stuff together and everything because I have a network of people to plug into once I go over there. And this is what I want to do. You know, right now we don't have that. You know, you can't just tell somebody to come to the continent and they got to spend the next 10 years working their way around. How come there aren't those networks in place? You know, and like I said, it's a burden of unity and Pan-Africa only on us. You know, everybody wants to practice tribalism. They want to practice nepotism. They want to get into all their groups and their own everything. But when it comes to African-Americans, we got to be the Pan-African ones. We got to be the loving ones. We got to uh, uh, take care of everybody else. We got to work with everybody else. And then, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, be so understanding and everything like that. But what about us? You know, what about us? What else? are we not allowed to have anything? We're not allowed to say anything. You know, we're not allowed to express ourselves and everything. So, so this is the I'll we'll talk about the topic tonight. Is the burden of Pan Africanist unity on the diaspora? Let, let, let me ask you this, uh, Carlo. What, what, yeah. what happened after? As I said before, the spirit of Pan Africanism died with Kwame and Kroma. Like yeah. what? Yeah. Happened? And Africanism on the you, you know, the, re the reason why is that it was very strategic, you know, very strategic. It didn't just happen overnight. And it didn't just happen by accident, right? The European colonial powers, right? I, you know me, I hate bringing up white supremacy in the corner because I like to put the responsibility on us, right? But they did a strategic thing, right? That was almost genius. It was almost genius that we didn't see coming. And we didn't see coming. What they did was say like this, and I studied this, I studied this in Zululand. That's why you have in Kata. You know, why do we have Nkata? What was Nkata there for? To make sure that the ANC and the pan african Congress and Zion People's uh, Organization didn't rise up. So let's create our own uh, movement. You know, let's create Zulu so-called nationalism out of tribalism and everything. Right. This is what they did. Europeans, uh, we got mute, you got mute. Okay, all right, all right. Europeans systematically went around and said, look, you know, in order for us to control Africans, right, we have to emphasize their tribal differences. OK, we see ourselves as black, right? Black. That's a direct response from living in the West, where the only thing that mattered was your black skin. Right. It didn't matter once you got off these shores, landed these shores of America. You could be enemies in Africa. Right. But once you are chained, there's an old saying men chained together are brothers. Right. That's the experience of the diaspora and the slave descendant. We are all brothers because we were chained together. We were beaten together. It didn't matter what we were. That didn't matter. That's the one thing the Europeans did for us. Is that they created this sort of culture where we see ourselves as a race? That is a threat to them. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, what they did was they make sure that sort of thinking, right, strategically has been off the continent. The only outpost of that Pan Africanist thinking, Pan African really just means black, black first. You know what I'm saying? You hear people say black first, and people are laugh at Jason Black or whatever, like, but he's right about one thing. It's all about being black. That's it. When I say African, I'm talking about black. You know, that's what comes first. I don't care about your tribe, your nationality, and also like stuff like that. That that being black and your the experience of living outside of Africa and the hell you go through just because you're black, that is your damn identity. Not your dashikis, not your uh, braids in your head. You know what I'm saying? Not all the friggin' uh, grass skirts you may wear. Not all the boom shaka lot of stuff you may talk about. It's all about being black. If you are black and whatnot, you are you are eighty percent there. I'll take it. You're, you're, to me, you're, you're black. You're, you're, you're good to go. You know, I, because I know every black person somewhere in his life has been called a nigga. You know what I'm saying? You've been called a nigga, and somewhere along the line, you got something ha happen to you that makes you want to lash out revenge. Now, if you're looking on the TV, if you've actually been in a coma, and you see black people getting shot down by police every day, black men can't get along with each other and everything like that, black, black females and black males. Hey, hey, real, real quick, you, you brought up the police thing. Now, uh, the Dallas situation. Right. So 
I, I gotta confirm it, but they're saying what happened that no, uh, <laughs> it was a noise complaint that she yeah. lived oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. and came downstairs to raise hell. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, but they're gonna cover that up. Let me tell you something, folks. You know, I, let me tell you something, folks, right? What's gonna happen is this. This is what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna know all that, right? You know, saying they basically gonna say, Yeah, so she came down there to confront him, whatever like that. She, he probably said, Get the fuck out of here, whatever. Like she shot him down and everything like that. But because he's a big black man and everything, that's a little tiny white girl and everything like that. You know, the police department is gonna try to cover it up and everything. The family will get a payoff, you know what I'm saying? The family will get a payoff, right? Uh, Messi Jackson, all the people, they'll get paid off. The MOC people get paid off. Hey, 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 hey Colin, guess who the guess who the lawyer is? Oh, well, that guy Crump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll so, get paid, he'll get yeah. he'll get his cut. He'll get paid off and everything. And uh, and the bottom line is, you'll get angry. You'll rise up and whatnot. Just that little thing. They say, okay, we'll have a f- couple of broken glass buildings and everything. We'll have some protests. We'll rekindle Black Lives Matter. When I give us like four or five months, things will come back to normal. And you'll be back ready for the Super Bowl, and everybody was sitting there singing "Kumbaya." You know, it's the same situation. But what's different about this situation is they uh, is they have not begun the character assassination of this young man. You know, by all things, he was doing all things, and not only that, he was a black immigrant. You know, that goes out the door where a lot of black immigrants say, "Oh, I'm here. I obeyed the law. Law. I shouldn't happen. Nothing should happen because I'm law abiding." You know, what I'm saying I don't complain. I do all right things. He was in a white church, whatever. Uh, an accountant and everything like that. Well, I'm not going to mock the brother, man. He, he had no reason to be killed. But the whole thing is, is you have a lot of black immigrants, like that were caught, that, that, that um, Rama Farley guy, kid in the Bronx. Remember that uh, situation where the, uh, the cops followed him home and shot him right in his house in the Bronx a couple of years ago? Uh, I don't so remember that. The taxi driver from the Gambia a, a while ago. Uh, oh, no, that's another one. This Diallo, was a young kid. Diallo, this kid was, Diallo. Diallo. Oh, that's all. No, this, this has happened like around five years ago. Anyway, uh, I was wondering why the parent, the family was so calm. This is when I started really noticing this, right? And then I noticed, I said, wait a minute, there's not a lot of African Americans left in the Bronx, right? Then you come and find, you listen to the parents' voice, they're foreign, right? So they had this whole idea that we want to talk to the police department and get to the bottom. And I'm like, lady, they're covering up. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to get the son. They, they shot your son in cold blood. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to America. He wasn't doing nothing wrong. He went home and the cops. Uh, broke into his house. They, they said uh, uh, they were trying to bust him a weed possession of all things, and they shot him down dead. You know, and in the bottom line, the cops walked on him. You know, and so the whole thing is, is, and you have black immigrants now, like, well, you know, geez, you know, if uh, if uh, maybe if he didn't have a hoodie on and stuff like that, try to distance yourself from so-called African Americans as much as possible, and things will work out. And what happens is this: you got a situation like this guy down in uh, t- Dallas. This guy's a model citizen, right? He's in his own apartment. He wasn't walking the street. This doesn't happen at 7-Eleven and everything. And what happens? He gets gunned down right in his apartment. And the only thing, like I was alluded to before, is they haven't begun the character assassination. Bro. You know what I'm saying? They haven't begun, well, he was a thug. You know what I'm saying? Well, he was a big black guy and all this stuff. So they haven't done that yet. You know, and like I said, when they do, and they do, I think it's over for America. You know what I'm saying? Because that'll show black people once and for all. You know, because they always put these doubts in your head. Like Michael Brown. They, they, they convinced a lot of black people that he robbed the store, which he never did. You know, they fought Darren Wilson, which he never did. Trayvon Martin, you know, saying, man, maybe he did beat George Wilson down. That put that in your head, that little skate valve, so you could basically go back to Coon. You know, uh, everybody, everybody. Ah, see, I, I disagree with you. I mean, if Tamir Rice didn't do it. Oh, no, Tamir, Tamir Rice was another thing. You know, that, that's a whole different situation. You know, why didn't we uh, rally around Tamir Rice situation? I have no idea. You know, Eric Gardner. Well, the brother should have, even his family, he, he didn't want to work. He should have had a job, you know, uh, just that you know, out there selling cigarettes. So the man lost his life. And all you can say is he should have had a job and they're having uh, uh, cigarettes, you know, would sell cigarettes. So a lot of black people it, uh, say all this stuff, but we don't really do anything. And this situation right here, what can you actually say about this dude? He was in his own apartment. It, it used to be a saying, like I remember there was a time, um, uh, it was during the time of, uh, uh, Oh, yeah, remember, I don't remember, think you remember this. First of all, I was born too. Uh, Sonny Liston uh, was fighting Muhammad Ali, right? And then Sonny Liston tried to move. He was talking about all Sonny Liston was like telling Muhammad Ali, why are you talking about all that black stuff? So, Sonny Liston was thug. And he always dated white women and stuff like that, right? Well, anyway, and, uh, and then um, another guy challenged uh, Floyd Patterson, right? Said, I'm going to do this for America and America, right? Then he tried to move into a, a white neighborhood and he got cross burned on his lawn. And everybody started saying, so this is Mr. I will fight the, for America against Muhammad Ali. 
And then there was a saying that became a, a man's home of the castle is not a phrase for a black man. You know, so in other words, basically, a man's home is, you heard that phrase, right? A man's home is your castle, you know, but that doesn't apply to black men. You can get shot in your own house. Police can uh, enter your house at, at will, or whatever like that, no warrant, whatever, disrespect you and uh, harass you and everything. And so uh, it's just it's just a, a, a sad situation what's going on here in uh, black America. You know, a sad situation. Like I said, the only thing, you know, we can do is basically keep building what we're doing right here. It's not just Africa, it's in America. We have to start closing ranks and building things among ourselves, you know, and then and you try to tell people that and they're like, they still want to fight you on this stuff. You want to, they want to. Uh, 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 pontificate, and they want to go off on left field and everything. Yeah, yeah no, no. Here, here, here it is. Here it is. We were, uh, we're British agents. Yeah, we're, British. we're British agents. The, so the, the, the BAIO uh, America is the, the going to Africa. Yeah, we're we're trying to trick you into going to Africa so we can flood the country with black immigrants from Africa. Okay, that's a plan. That's a grand plan. I, I must say, y'all. Yeah, I want to say something. If everybody's an agent, man, where's all this money, man? Maybe I might become an agent. You know what I'm saying? As if, uh, there's all this money floating around and whatnot. So, hey, how can I sign up, Dana? You know, maybe I'm doing the wrong thing in life. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I should become an agent. You know, do they get paid? I know for a fact of the matter is the BAL is the only thing in the world I do for free. You know what I'm saying? This search for who we're on the BAL is the only thing in the world I do for free. You know, you know, I don't work for free. You know, so the bottom line is if, if I'm an agent, show me the payroll, show me the pay stuff, show me the bank account, show me where somebody's paying. You know, you think I'm one doing this for a thing? And the fact that you call me an agent, I mean, well, you must think really highly of me, of me to be talking about that. I must have this influence that I could be an agent of somebody to influence somebody, you know. So, hey, like I said, you know, the whole thing is, folks, you just have to be more intelligent than 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 people let on. And what I'm proud of is I listen to these people that tracked against us and everything. You know, most of them say, look, I listen to BAO. Anybody with an open mind and open heart would say these guys are honest, they're genuine, they're saying what they say and everything like that, you know, and they don't really. Uh, 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 force you into anything and everything. We just tell people, no, no thing is, how can we mis be misleading people when everybody that joins the BAL seems to be intelligent? You know, we have intelligent people that join the BAL. That's one thing I'm proud of. You know, the ignorant black people just bypass us. I don't understand this stuff. You know, I don't want to do that. You know, you know, you know, or people just want to be entertained. Don't come, don't bother with us. But people are serious about getting involved with something and they find a home. Wow, you guys are talking about IT, science, you guys are talking about building and whatnot. You guys are talking about business and everything. Wow, decent type of people. I, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sick of being. People tell me I'm sick of being the only black person when we start talking about architecture, and engineering, stuff like that. And black people look like like you talking to Greek, or when you talk about something intelligent, right? You're a Negro P. You know. So in other words, you could talk about nation building and basically say, yeah, if you're going to be a, be a nation builder, hey, let's talk about building a black African nation. Oh, wow. So in other words, I could apply my skills and talents and everything. And basically be around people just like me, yes. So you can take the best of what you have, you what God gave you, all this incredible talent, and be part of an organization that's building something for your people. I mean, that's a win-win situation all around. You know, so who the heck is telling people that uh, uh, we're doing something bad? You mean tell me talking about uh, energy, different sort of modes of energy? So in other words, only white people are supposed to talk about energy and permaculture and uh, science and everything? But yet, Dinas, I thought we were supposed to be the Imhotep uh, creators of all things science and all knowing and everything. You it, know? it, it doesn't go past. Uh, so we can't talk. We can't talk architecture as far as implementing it now. It can't go past. We built the pyramids like anything right. past that is not. Nah, we can't talk about it. Well, we can't talk about that. We built the pyramids, but yet we got the Chinese coming up. But yet we the Chinese are going to build Africa for us. Right. That's a new thing we're going to talk about, too. Is that people? You got so-called Pan-Africans that the Chinese are gonna build Africa for us. I'm like, I thought you were supposed to be, you know, builders of civilization, and everything. You mean tell me you don't know what it is? Because a lot of these people are lazy. They don't pick up books. They don't know it. I've been studying science and infrastructure now for 25 years. You know, I've been studying how nations are built and everything. I studied Singapore. How I went from a backwater swamp to a first world nation in one generation. And so I'm saying to myself, why is it that Africa and black people can't do the same thing? They can't. You know, but the thing is, we don't have any confidence in ourselves as black people to build anything. We think that we always got to have another race of people building something for us. You know, and so so, so that when the black African infrastructure comes around and we say, well, why don't we become that, make it cool and make it possible to talk about nation building, 
not from a, a, a theoretic or vague and abstracted, but an actual physical, tangible nation. What would it take to build? Uh, uh, what would it take to build such a nation? And everything. Well, you need land. You know, what I'm saying you need a government of your own. You need to be able to pass laws. You need to be able to finance it. You need taxation. You need all these things and everything like that that a nation has. Well, how can you have all that? Well, you need the rule of law. You know what I'm saying? You need laws and uh, you need government. You need systems of government in place. And so uh, you ask you ask the people, I'll say, okay, that means that all the time we spend hope. I ain't going to say that word, hotep. I was going to make a thing, but uh, let, me, let me stop. All the time we spend hotep and, uh, and, uh, 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 and doing all this kind of nonsense and everything like that. Uh, uh, we have to actually sit down and do uh, do study. We have to do uh, uh, do our work, and we have to do uh, 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 things that basically th basically that other people do. In other words, basically, there's an old saying: discipline. Discipline is a bridge between a thought and or an idea and accomplishment. In other words, basically, is when you don't have any discipline, right? And you can tell people who have discipline when they do things consistently. Is Diane, nice, tell you the truth, isn't that what you judge people by when you see them, at least see them online, right? If they say they got a show, they do a show uh, 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 stuff, and they don't disappear for like three months at a time, they start back up right. and fall off. If they keep being consistent and everything, what does that tell you about that person? That what they're he's doing is... Happy. They're not dedicated to what they're doing. Right, right, right. And so, hey, real quick, guys, let's get let's hit, let's hit that like button, okay? We have 148 people watching, only uh, only 57 likes. Let's get that like up. Shout out to Doug, right, in, in the chat. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so therefore, discipline is a thought uh, behind uh, uh, an idea and accomplishment. The the problem with black people, our people in America, is this: we have to become so unruly. You know what I'm saying? And we didn't, we're unruly when it comes to uh, black people. You know what I'm saying? We're never unruly when it comes to white people or people that's really trying to exploit us. Now, if you're uh, uh, a guru that's taking people's money and having them out there working for you, you're abusing the women, and you're just living high off the hog and everything like that, oh, you'll get followers. They'll, they'll make excuses for you. And uh, right. it's that you know, they'll defend you to the day. That's, that's how it is. But if you're a white man, you know uh, uh, black people never rise up against white people, right? Why? Because the bottom line is this, they know they got to check in at Monday morning and punch that clock. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, you know, black people know you got to punch that clock in the morning. You know what I'm saying? And you got to ask them, what you do this weekend? Were you down at that uh, riot that happened on? Oh, I wasn't there. Or you don't want to be uh, late. Oh, the boss, you might find out I was at that, that, that rally. Well, I mean, let me, let me not do, let me, uh, 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 let me do that. You know what I'm saying? Let me let, let me uh, do my own thing and everything. I'm not going to get involved in everything. You know, so therefore, we're accountable when it comes to white people. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got car notes due. You're going to pay that car note on time. You know, the electric bills due. The electric bills due. You're going to pay electricity on time. But people always ask me, if we build this nation, will I have to pay ele for electricity? Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get free electricity. We're going to get free health care. Oh, okay. Okay. You get free health care. Okay, uh, will we have to work? You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay. So you want to, don't work. You want to uh, hand, uh, check out. So in other words, do we have to ban laws, man? Because laws suck, man. This that little you know, thing. You know what I'm saying? So I should be able to do what I want to do. And I'll be finally free. No, Negro. Yeah, no. yeah. I could, I could really be a mo. I could really be a mo and have my uh, status correction, international uh, status, where I don't have to uh, get arrested and I I could be judged. Um, uh, uh, by the Morris Council. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying we have our own Morris Council, so we don't have the courts and that. No courts. Yeah, I don't have to go to the court. No, I don't have to yeah. go to the court. Yeah. So, 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 therefore, all this nonsense uh, has uh, become because, unfortunately, over the last uh, decades and everything, uh, Black America has focused so much on integration, right? That the that the that the Pan Africans or Unity stuff has been basically co-opted by criminals. Let me give you an example, right? And the various people, well, right? I said, I said the, the majority of this info comes from the prison system. Yes, yeah, prisons. They're, they're criminals. You know what I'm saying? The whole thing about because in, in, in on the streets, they knew how to hustle people, steal drugs, rob and steal and everything. Then they go and they you know, by the time they get in their 30s, where well, they know they can't live that life anymore. So they basically said, well, this, I can make a living basically hustling other ways, hustling knowledge, right? And so instead of stealing, uh, cars and everything they start stealing history 
You know, let's make up our history. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you see something that you like, you go jack that shit. You know what I'm saying? I will never forget to uh, 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 watch this dude do martial arts one time, right? And I studied martial arts, right? And these dudes started doing a form that I recognize, right? And he called it the comedic hands. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, you think bro, get the hell out of here. I said, that's the Chinese chi style form. You know what I'm saying? In mm -hmm. an arm company. What do you call it? The comedic, the comedic hands. How do you feel about uh, comedic yoga? Oh, Lord. You got to be kidding me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? And then next thing you know, you get the comedic Kama Sutra. You know, get your freak on. You know what I'm saying? The comedic style. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know but the bottom line is, yo, you got to understand, we, Holop and I, have a PhD in Negroology. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you understand the Negro and Negroology, you understand why you could present an organization to them that will help them. And the same Negroes will fight you. I mean, they'll come out and kill you. Not because what you're doing is wrong, because you're doing it in the first place. But you know what's crazy? In, 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 uh, me and Holup, uh, we were talking about it in the, uh, in the chat. Holup was getting criticized for not going to Africa, right? Right. Then I'm getting criticized for We're going, going to Africa, Africa and, yeah. and, and, and trying to trick uh, <laughs> Black Americans to, to, to leave uh, America to go to Africa. So hey, change that, change could, that. listen, listen. So they could be re all replaced by uh, uh, African immigrants. African immigrants. You know, you get criticized. Then the guy, the same clown, says Dinus is not an African American. He's a African disguising himself as an African American to trick people and whatnot to going over to Africa and whatnot. So you're not an African American and whatnot. We're just Africans pretending to be yeah. African Americans. We're trying to trick black people. We're really, we're, we're all really Nigerians, and we're trying to trick black Americans to go to Africa so they can come over here and steal America. You know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. I, I, was, just, I, was, hey, I wasn't born and raised in Sacramento, California. Really. Yeah, I wasn't born and raised in New York either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm actually Nigerian. I've been here for five years. I got this accent, and overnight I went to act. Well, uh, they said speech classes so we can get rid of our accents and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, 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 and that was paid for by the British uh, Secret Service. I am, yeah. and I, I'm 007 Negro. Yeah, Double that's what I'm saying, yo. Yeah, I, you know, that's a, a British Secret Service. We're really working for the British and everything like that. And then I had a Negro, right? Uh huh. And, and that's another thing, right? The Negro, uh, understand Negroology, right? There's this dude. That put up a uh, has a group called Black Demographics, right? Now, first of all, you're black demographics. Oh, and then you really they'll see, like I said, you always give people a time to expose themselves, right? So I said uh, uh, pages like Atlanta Black Star, which is a race trader page. You know what I'm saying? Uh, black demographics. All these people basically they can't come out and say that we believe in mulattoism and we're really coons. We're Captain American Negroes. We're Facebook pretending Indians. You know what I'm saying? We're cheap running coon Indians. They won't come out and say that because you'll be laughed out, right? What they'll do is say, come out and say we're pro-black, right? Pro-black, just that yellow thing, right? And then they they will you into the Nazis. They'll talk about, oh yeah, white supremacy. The police are stuck this and yell thing. But gradually they start they start exposing themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of us aboriginal. Oh, boom, there we go. All of us are uh, real American aboriginal gotta fight white people for our land. Who what? Are you talking about the white South Africans in Africa? What land are you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know, we're the original people of America. Oh, so I get it. All that stuff about black unity and all that stuff was just a pretense. So you could basically uh, 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 cajole. And then you got people like the sister, right? She's arguing back and forth and everything. I said, sister, let me tell you something, right? You are 100% African. No, well, so that, that's what you say. That's a white man's book. No, sister. I'm looking at your picture right now. You come from somewhere deep in the Congo. You're 100% African. You know what I'm saying? That wig on your head and whatnot is not your real hair. Just that, you know, you're an African. You know what I'm saying? Be proud of that. You know what I'm saying? Be the Dorle Milaje of, of, of Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? Be proud of what you are. The whole thing is this, Dinus. We could be talking to the blue in the face. And I'm going to tell you right now, folks. If you can't look in the mirror, look directly in the mirror, just go outside, go to your house and sit in front of the mirror. If you can't sit there more than 20 minutes and say, and, and, and if you don't like what yourself, say, look, I'm going to learn to love what I look like. You know I'm saying I'm going to learn to uh, to be uh, uh, in love with my race and what I look like. 
And not only that, if I don't love what I'm so I'm gonna learn to like myself, right? Enough, right? Eventually love myself, but I'm gonna have to accept the fact that I am not white. I am not Native American. You know what I'm saying? You let's say it again. You are not Native American. You know what I'm saying? Right. You are not American. You know what I'm saying? You are not Native American. Uh, you know what Hebrew, saying? Hebrew Israelite. You are not no Hebrew Israelite. You are not a Moor. You know what I'm saying? You are not all this nonsense that they keep telling you about and everything. You are black slave descendants in America, right? If you want to come out from that, join the black African infrastructure organization and let's build something to make you proud to be what you are. You know what I'm saying? I understand. The black race in America has been on a losing team. Nobody wants to be part of a losing team. Why don't we just admit that, you know? Do you still see anybody with a lot of New York, New Jersey uh, uh, Jets uh, uh, thing on? But the thing is, your skin color is something you can't change. You look at it when, when everybody, not everybody's a Patriots fan, right? Well, I feel the Patriots win, right? The Patriots are a winning team. Right. You know, everybody's, uh, who's a Dallas Cowboy? Dallas Cowboys a winning team. Everybody likes it. You know, everybody wants to be part of winners. Everybody loves the New York Yankees. Why? Because they win. That's just human nature. Now, when people come to America, right? They can come from Africa and everything. And and Kyle, Kyle, I am I am a Chickasaw Indian. Yeah, Chickasaw Indian. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no, you, you, you could be a chicken that saw the Indian, right, and ran and you captured an ape, you know? That's what a Chickasaw you do. The chicken that you captured saw an Indian, right, ran, and you ran over across the street and caught him. That's your Chickasaw, you know? So, so the whole thing is this. whole thing is this. We're talking about self-love, right? Self-love. Uh-huh. Self-love. Building first of all, it comes race first. Before we start talking about this, oh, this go that no, 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 we're talking about we. This is a race thing, and when we talk about building Africa, the reason why we're talking about Africa is because that's our ancestral homeland, and Africans have to really be a cognizant of that. You know that we have a different identity. We identify more by race than by tribe. You can't just be dismissive of our pain and suffering. Right. You know, and while we think a certain way. You know, that's why people don't get a lot of stuff done in Africa, because they're going over there and have high expectations of when they get off the ground. And everybody's going to be like, yo, man, yeah, like, you know, where's my land at? Where's my you know, land? You know what I'm saying? Where's the whole tep and whatnot? We're going to go out there. We're going to fight the power, man. I mean, yeah, and they go over there and it's not like that. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not. I haven't been to the continent yet, but I know it's like that just by listening to what Africans have to say. They don't care about that. They're trying to get ahead. They're trying to, uh, 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 to get their degrees. They're trying to feed their families and everything. It's just real. You know what I'm saying? So when you come there, you have to come with a win-win situation for everybody. That's all we're saying to black African people. Let me that again, Kyla, because I think that's the part that people are missing. It has to be a win-win situation for A everybody. win-win situation. You cannot bring Africa your baggage. You know what I'm saying? You cannot bring your baggage over there and talk about, oh, yeah, let's build something, and you bring all your pain. You know what? one thing that interests me, right? You know what I'm saying? And uh, this would shock me, right? This was this was this would shock me, right? You remember that video where the African American couple went over to Ghana, and the dude, like a light skinned couple, they went over there, and the, the dude was like in his pajamas, talking about uh, where finally we bought they bought a house over there. It's on YouTube. They bought a house over there, and they with that one sister that that, uh, that has the uh, the bed and breakfast, whatever. But this this that this this, this video was made back in like two thousand nine. Okay, and, yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, the Queen Mother in uh, Cape Coast. I know she has the bed and breakfast. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, anyway, they was with her, right? And and, uh, and the one chick, the lady, the wife was like, "Oh, you see, I see you trying to charge the broody prices." And the uh, and the one chick was like, uh, "Do you consider them African?" No, they're broonies. And they had the dashiki on everything, and they call them uh, broonies. And I'm like, "Wow," you know what I'm saying? And then it dawned on me. I said, "This one dude said, you know, it's a shame because we're all African people.' Did it show me this is a simple African American, right? He probably read." About Kwame Kumra and all stuff like that, Ghana's a place, and I want to settle down. And like, then he gets there, right? And the local people is like, well, we, what we want is these people to learn who we are. And it dawned on me, I said, you know, we're going over there projecting what we think they are. You know, Africa, this is our homeland, and everything. And when you got different tribes and different identities and different cultures and different nuances and everything, and we don't take time. And then she said, African Americans come here, and the same ones that are out there on the beach, you know, doing the celebrations. They said these people don't know the least about us. She said, when at least when the white people come here, they take time to learn our local languages. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They take time to learn. They, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying, Dinus? You take time to learn the indigenous cultures and everything like that and uh, and uh, the, the different things. I learned a lot about the indigenous cultures in Liberia. I had to. You know what 
know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to project. Well, I learned from Liberia. You can't just say, okay, we're all black, and then that's it. No, they have a different identity. You know, a crewman is a crewman. A gribble man is a gribble man. You know what I'm saying? A bossa man is a bossa man. And I learned, and I, and I know the Liberian dialects and stuff like that. And when I talk to Liberians on the phone, and my girl's Liberian, I talk to Liberians on the phone, and they're like, you know, yeah, Kyla, you are Liberian now, man. Because <clears throat> I know their lingo. I know their colorful. You know what I'm saying? I know some of their folklores. You know what I'm saying? Folklore. I'm not going to project my pan-Africanism on them. And then a lot of times they understand, you know what I'm saying? Like a oh, boy Will will tell me, he'll, he'll articulate thing. He'll defend me all the time and says, look, Kyla, you got to, uh, if you don't know something, teach it. You know what I'm saying? They've been ripped away from their culture and everything, and they're excited about Africa and everything. We understand. We don't know what that's like not to live, be able to see the most powerful people in your society be look like you. They're coming to a different, uh, 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 coming from a different culture. They have a different mindset. So, of course, they're a little apprehensive about seeing whites in Africa and stuff like that. You know, and I can appreciate all my Liberian brothers and friends who always defend me on that level. They say, you don't understand the African American. You know what I'm saying? When the people, Africans that understand us, they understand why we think a certain way, why we do certain things and everything like that. At the same time, you have to reciprocate. You got to understand their culture, too, why they say think a certain thing. Why is Biafra the way it is? You know, what does what the Biafra want? You know what I'm saying? What, is, what do they want? They have their own history and everything else taken from them, right, Under the, in, the, in, in the rush to create this country called Nigeria. Now, we can't go backwards, right, but still people are like, well, geez, you know, I'm a Biafran. I just want to be with my Biafran people and, and have this Biafran society and everything like that. They have it all planned out and everything. But then other people have ideas. They'll say, okay, we got Nigeria. Now let's, let's not do this. So we have to be like this. So we as black people in the West and everything, we're coming into all this. And like, where do we fit in? And we go back to South Africa, right? It was a, it's strange how uh, when it comes to like African and African conflict, right? Black people, you show me anywhere, and I'm not going to, this is not the to uh and somebody said this too. Somebody said this too. Somebody asked uh um uh why is it Omar Johnson when he's asked about what's going on in different parts of Africa, he doesn't have an answer. Everything is oh because the white man's there. You know? It's something vague and simplistic, the white man's there. Well, what do you think about what's going on in uh 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 C A R? Oh, simple. The white man's there. White global white supremacy forces, and like right. you know, it's a little more complicated than that. I thought you knew about what's going on in Africa. You call it the Prince of Pan Africanism. Why is it all this disunity and stuff like that? Why is this stuff uh, going it, on? It's, it's dusty Negroism. Yeah, I didn't want to say it like that. <laughs> no, yeah, so, I think I just call it it's dusty Negroism. That's what it is. Yeah. And so we don't. So what, let me ask you a question. If if you're a continental African, right? Right. And and you have an identity. You know who you are. You know who you are. And I Alleg have Alleg I Alleg had, they 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 say that to, right. Uh, yeah. Feel superior to us. Yeah, but they do, but, but it works though. You know, uh, now Ebo man, not, not with me anymore. But go ahead. Yeah, not with you anymore. But e uh, Ebo man will tell you. Look, I know my. I've been an Ebo man. I could I could uh, trace my generation, my family back a thousand years. I know who I am. I'm an Ebo man, and my future generation. Will, and that's a real serious thing. I don't yeah, want to be a yard. He'll look you in the eye. He'll have on skinny jeans. Tell you he's going to uh, worship white Jesus on Sunday. You know, right? He's, but the thing is, but when it comes down to when it yeah. comes down to the conundrum of Pan Africanism, hey, here's a thought back, back to that. Uh, he's he's um he's Jewish. You know, he's um part yeah, of the Jewish tribes, and you know, well, well, unless, unless it has something unless it has something to do with identifying with being an Arab or white, then then it's okay. We'll 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 accommodate that. But when you start talking about pan africanism oh, no, I'm an Igbo. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm an Igbo. I can't do that. What about your fellow Nigerian? Oh, this, this country, Nigeria, is a fake. It's created by Lord Lugar and everything. But yet, you consider yourself a part of Palestine. You know what I'm saying? You consider yourself a part of Palestine, and the Jews are going to come over to Africa, come to your Africa, and rescue you and bring you back to Israel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is not what the guy said. Yeah, you know, with, a straight said face. With, a, with a straight face. You know, and so therefore, when people say this stuff like that, they always get no on African Americans. You guys gonna go over there and be humble and be humble and everything like that. Be humble and just just uh, listen to what you got say. Say nothing and be humble and kiss our ass and this that and the other. And I'm like, wait a minute here. You know, we're not allowed to ask some questions, some serious questions here. You know, why is there so much disunity on the continent and everything? So you want to? So in other words, basically, you know, and the question I want to ask too uh, to the audience tonight is that. Why is it that everyone seems like they're uh, a 
afraid of African American unity. You know what I'm saying? You know, everyone's afraid, afraid of, afraid of that unity. You know, if I say, you know, uh, 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 we, what we need to do on the continent is stick together, build our own communities. And oh no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, you can't. Why not? You know, I mean, you didn't give that same uh, memo to the Chinese. Well, you're black. You're, 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 you should blend in. But when you come to America, you have your little Haiti communities, your little Nigerias, you, and Harlem got your little Senegal. And everything like that. You guys don't even bother. There was an incident where you saw that video where the lady was in the United States from Senegal for 20 years. Yeah, yeah. They, they, basically they, uh, never learned how to read or write or couldn't read or write and never learned how to speak English in 20 years. That means you weren't socializing with the black people around you here and you stuck to yourself. And then you couldn't, you didn't have a community to back you up and everything like that. Because if you were going to your local NAACP chapter and black group chapter, you could have had some support, right? But you stayed away from black people. You told her, and then they would say, "We we obey the law. We don't get into trouble." So who are you talking about when you say we don't get into trouble? Right. You're talking about the, the uh, we want to be the, the model minority. So 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 that all this nonsense, you know. And people say, "College, why are you talking?" The fact that we're doing the show tonight is going, and we're going to get the blowback from the show. You see what you say, college devices. You're preaching just you being that. No, I'm just preaching like this. But why? Because I don't believe in being phony. If we want to ever, like you said, we want Nigeria to win. We, we've been on record, Diane. Didn't we say that? Absolutely. We want Nigeria to win. We want Africa to win. But we can't win if we're built, if something's built on falsehoods and lies. You know what I'm saying? We can't build if we basically don't get to the bottom of things and get to the truth, get to the root cause of, of all this stuff. And sitting back and being quiet and just pretending like everything's okay is not good. You know, we have Africans that come here. And like I said, a sister uh, um, uh, uh, just joined the BAIO. She said she listened to Dynas, and she said she would listen to uh, Phil's show. She said she listened to O'Shea sometimes until the guys start coming in and they start fighting. And she said, no, that's, you know, she said, I can't listen to that, So, but I like O'Shea. But I like Dynas' show but the best out of all. And she said she liked when the BAIO guests were on. You know, she, said, she, said, she said, finally, I feel like I'm listening to real men. Mm -hmm. You know, she said, I'm 65 years old, and I've never heard men, black men talk like this before. You know, and that's what we're giving to people. And our talk is going to turn manifest itself into deeds. You know, our talking is going to manifest into deeds one day. You know, but we have to get our messaging right first. You know, and she said, "Well, I've never heard anything talk about you guys talk with such confidence and intelligence and everything." She goes, "You guys, I've, I've listened. I, I was married twice to two pastors and whatnot, and uh, I used to follow the Nation of Islam, and I never uh, got any real answers to. Now I've listened to you guys, and wow, I've just blown away." And so. And she could she didn't want to know she didn't think she was worthy to join the B. I said, What do you mean you're not worthy to join the BHU? Like, you guys are just too advanced. I said, Sister, go to the name site and sign up. <laughs> you know, get we, we we don't do all that, judge all that. If yeah. you just meet us halfway and say you want to be participating and join your local chapter and everything like that, you can host me because I don't really have any real skills. I'm retired right now. And I, you know, I said I when you guys ask what profession. I don't really have. I look. What is your profession? You love your people. That's good enough for me. Right. You know, you know, join the organization. Be around people that's not going to judge you and this is going to embrace you. And we're doing all this together because we're a family. You know, and that's what the organization. Like. Even people that fall out with us, you know, sooner or later they're going to be back. You know, what I'm saying, and that's our hope and I. We're so forgiving. You know, people you know, tear us to pieces and everything. And we're always like, you know, say, you know, caller man, I really apologize. And, and, they always, and we they always come back to the folks because that's the sort of love we have for our culture and, and our people. You know what I'm saying? We love our people so much when I are forgiven. You know what I'm saying? We know there's nobody that, there's nobody, if you really love black people, you really want to see, you'll join with us. Right? You put all this bickering and this beefing beside and let's join together and let's build, let's build something. Let's, let's iron our differences and let's build something, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you basically just trying to be uh, a sour apple all the time. When you're not going to go get any place because we're not going any place. In fact, the more people attack us, the more people keep joining the BAIO. You know, so keep keep uh, attacking us and keep lying on. People come here and find out what we're talking about. They go to Dynasty Show. Dynasty is uh, 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 in like what four weeks. You got ten thousand new members uh, subscribers. Yeah. Holy jeez! You know, holy jeez! Dynasty is on track to be. 50,000, uh, 60,000 by the end of the year, you know, so just keep it, keep on the hate and, and all the stuff like that up and everything, you know, it's doing us a lot of uh, hurt, as you can see, you know, it's hurting us really bad.
Right. You know, you know. So, so, so the whole thing is, you know, we have to be honest about ourselves. Why is the unity always on the diaspora? You know, and you said some earlier. You said, well, gee, when they talk about diaspora, they're talking about they're not talking about us. You have two hundred million people of African descent that have no representation on the world stage. You know, no voice. Now, in anywhere in history, right? Uh, you had nations that basically went to war for generations, and they had only a hundred thousand people. You had two hundred million people under the control in the Western Hemisphere of uh, uh, of the white race. Let's put it like that. Not even in Cuba. Every last single black population in the Western Hemisphere is dominated by a white uh, a, a white or the so poor like Haiti. They can't do anything for themselves. You think that's any accident? No, it's not any accident. There's a reason why Afro-Colombians or Afro-Venezuelans are getting killed right now. They get burned in the streets. Right. You know, y'all fellow brown brothers and people of color. I hate that term so much. People of color. Everybody's a person of color when they're about to get deported and everything, and they need the black mobs to go out there and do their bidding for them. Like right. Joy Bayard or View said, What's, where's the black? We need the black men out there tearing stuff up. I'm like, so you don't like Trump, so you want us to get out there and start uh, rioting in the streets or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? As a mob, we, we're, we're just a rental mob, you know? We're supposed to just uh, just be so emotional, ready to trick it. So that tells me the liberals are just great. That's what they, that's what they think about us. We're just ready to riot and tear stuff up at a drop, a drop of a hat and everything. And we're going to use us to uh, do that bidding and everything. And after all these years of dealing with the liberals and everything, we have nothing out of it. Can you tell me, Diane, anything t tangible that came out of us uh, doing all this left wing uh, bidding and everything? Anything tangible? You know, black America. Look at Chicago. Black America is worse now than ever uh, worse. Baltimore. We said this in the last show. I don't even know what to tell you about Baltimore. You know, you know, what, what, if you were running for office in Baltimore, what uh, Diane can you honestly tell people? About what you would do, we're gonna rise up. <laughs> you, what, what can you tell somebody if you're running for office? How, how can you be looking at a straight face and go uh, run for office in Detroit in all the cities and tell uh, and tell people, oh, we need a new admission? Only thing they can do is keep talking about the Republican and Trump, right? Bye, Trump. Bye, 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 you know, yeah. scapegoat. But yeah. they can't tell you what they're gonna do. Why? Because we have people in like Cory Booker and uh, Tamala Jones, they're not even black. You Kamala, know what I'm saying? Kamala Harris. Yeah, all these people are not even black, but they're African Americans. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All you do is give somebody the title African American. Yo, know, he's a fine African American. What does that mean anymore? I don't know. It's an African American. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can have one drop of blood in you, live around white people whole, your whole entire life. You know what I'm saying? You know, listen to one rap record and everything like that. Shake hands with Jay-Z, and now you are African American. You know what I'm saying? Now you know all things black and everything. You're in the Senate. Cory Booker went from Wall Street, to, and, and six years, and seven years went from Wall Street, a Wall Street puppet, uh, puppy dog, to uh, the Senate. How the hell did that happen? Mayor of Newark and everything. It left nothing in Newark and everything. Now he's basically in the Senate. Why? Because he's an African American. You know, and so the bottom line is this. It's just a, 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 a real... Uh, 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 a shame and disgrace, and this uh, and this Valerie Jarrett. Let's talk about Valerie Jarrett, right? Right, 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 right. But what I hear, she, this lady's a color. I seen her daughter. Her daughter's like a straight up white girl. She got yeah, to talks like a white girl. Like white. You know, Valerie Jarrett looks. She's uh, a brother called called her eight. She she didn't know she was black. That's what it was about. You know, she called her eight. She did. You know, she's like, well, she's like eight. No, she was, she's African American. Oh, I didn't know that. You know, I just thought, you know, you know, whatever. Anyway, just a joke. Well, I'm not excuse what Roseanne said, but but Valerie Jerry has made some racist comments. She didn't like. She made comments about dark skinned black people her whole entire life. She didn't like Donna Brazil, you know, thought she called her gorilla and stuff like that. It just basically real. And it gets me this: these sort of people that, that these light skinned people that go around thinking that they're uh, they, they they don't have the numbers to have any political power. So what they do is they come in and and disguise themselves as African Americans. You know what I'm saying? And they do the left wing bidding cult, uh, thing. And they, what they do is they get us distracted by the Republicans and Trump and all stuff like that while they're living half the hall. From what I hear, Valerie Jarrett is owns a development company in Chicago and her around uh, Rahm Emanuel is raping the place blind. You know, right. owning condominiums and some everything, moving people out of different neighborhoods, regentrifying Chicago. 
But I, oh, it's all right. You know, you know what I'm saying? She is an African American, and that makes everything all good. It's all good. You know, she's a fine African American, although she don't identify with it. And her daughter looks like a demon. You know what I'm saying? Look, if you ask me, you know, she's like a straight up white girl. You know, they, but but when she gets in trouble and everything like that, when she gets called out, when she gets busted, or something, she will be an African American, and you guys will run to her aid. You know, right, exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, so so all this nonsense. Black people in America are losing their identity. Somebody else is basically uh, 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 putting uh, controlling our political. In other words, basically, forty five million people basically our political uh, 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 capital is sucked off by people who use our, our name in vain. You know what I'm saying? You mean to tell me 45 million people in America have no political voice? You know, you can't say no. Let's say, let's say uh, it comes down to America says, you know something, black folks, putting one little white girl in jail, you know, uh, is just not worth it. Hey, 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 uh, Kyla, real quick, guys, let's get the likes up. We have 184 people watching, only 95 likes. Please hit that like button. And then, real quick, uh, Kyle, let me read this question, and then you can, you can uh, swing back and answer later. Uh, is Liberia a blemish to Black Americans rep on the continent? No, no. It's only the, the, the interpretation of Liberia. You know what I'm saying? See, you understand something. Let me see. Let me. Let me. I'm glad that question was asked. People use Liberia when they, people attack Liberia. They're attacking Black America. They're attacking the idea because Liberia was formed uh, out of the idea that Black people should return to Africa and build a nation build a modern civilization for themselves on the African continent. It was never really supposed to be for indigenous population. You know, the majority of people that lived in Liberia were American Liberians and everything, and the indigenous people came from surrounding countries, you know? That was the truth. The settlements in Liberia on the coast were empty, you know? So so therefore, what they what Liberia made the mistake was, right, instead of populating the country, right, it was, it was Pan-Africanism on steroids, you know, and what nothing well thought out, right? And this is what you were saying, what happened with Kwame and Kumar. I'm explaining to you what happened. Pan-Africanism came from the African-American experience. Pan-Africanism mm -hmm. was born in America. It was not something indigenous to Africa. Pan-Africanism came because the majority of people in the 19th century who were educated were in the West, were outside of Africa. And we projected an African continent in our view, which we were going to build modern cities, schools, everything like that, education and everything like that, military and everything. But the whole thing is, is whites on the continent did not want that. They want the modernization and modernity of Africa to be administered and permeated through Africa by white people. Now, if you have this country called Liberia, which basically was an example of what a black people could do, it was, uh, Liberia was the, the most advanced country in colonial, when colonial Africa, when the colonists ruled Africa, Liberia cities like Monrovia, Harper, uh, Grand Cape, and all these other cities, Buchanan and whatnot, shine, stood out over the whole entire continent, rival Cape Town. You know what I'm saying? So here you have these black settlers, you know what I'm saying? Most of them from the Masonic order, Christian, whatever, Muslim, you know what I'm saying? And Islamic, built this civilization based on temperance, uh, 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 just hard work, and all this abstinence, and all the stuff like that. They did all these things, you know? And they basically built a hardworking civilization, clean. That low, no crime, everything like that. So therefore, if you look at the pictures from Liberia, the building they built, the cathedrals, the temples, the uh, the streets, and everything like that, all this like that. How does a black people build a modern civilization without white people present? And so therefore, what they did was they say, okay, that can't happen. Let's erase Liberia from history. And then when people ask about it, we'll say it was Af black people from America uh, oppressing the indigenous people, which would never happen because Liberia was a combination of settlers and indigenous people uh banging together but the whole thing was the west pe the people in the west and the people of the thing wanted the indigenous people to be the majority they control same thing what happened in uh in kwazulu natal same thing what happened in the congo with patrice lumumba anybody who's educated and think forwardly and, uh, and is that's progressive they're wiped out thomas and you know what i'm saying yeah. i'm a conquer bra in guinea bissau any sort of leader that basically had vision, Kwame Nkrumah, all these people basically have the same MO in common. They believed in nationalism, pan Africanism, black, uh, black racial identity. Uh, Samora Michael, which has, uh, he died in a helicopter crash. Allegedly. He was, allegedly. Uh, allegedly. He died in a uh, uh, plane. Uh, uh, 
uh, airplane crash. And the bottom line is this. You know, he said the same thing. It's about being black. You know what I'm saying? You got to look at the world from, see they, want, see, they don't want Africans looking at the world from a racial point of view. They want to always look at Africa. They want Africans to emphasize their culture and their ethnic differences. You know, but when Africans are educated, when they're educated, they tend to see themselves as black. You know what I'm saying? That's just a proven fact. Same thing will happen in KwaZulu Town. I say, well, what was KwaZulu Town all about? Most people say it was the Zulus versus uh, 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 the other tribe. No, it wasn't. The KwaZulu Town conflict was an internal fight among the Zulus. It was those who believed in a modern black civilization like ANC, educated and everything like that, and those who followed Encanto. Encanto was only big because it had the support of white money. You know what I'm saying? Chief, brutal, lazy. Europeans made sure that they kept African kings and chiefs in power, right? Why? Because you go to a young man and whatnot, a young man, right? And he'll, he'll, he'll tell you, aren't you a proud Zulu warrior? Yeah. But he said, well, why you got that suit and tie on and everything? Why you got the books in your hand? You should live like your ancestors. They did this to discredit the educated classes of Zulu in KwaZulu Natal. People don't know this, but a lot of the Zulus, right, ed first educated Zulus, study in African American universities in America. They went back to Africa, like uh, this guy, uh, uh, um, Anton Lebebe, the founder of the Pan Africanist Congress. All these people, they went back there with the idea that we have to have a, black, a nation for a black man. That's when the Pan Africanist Congress was formed with the help of African Americans and the African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Africa. You know, a Pan Africanist Congress and the African, African National Congress. The whole idea is you had people from different tribes, Kosa, Zulu, and everything, but we're all Africans. We're black now. You know what I'm saying? The enemy is the white people. You know what I'm saying? How do you counter that? Hey, we you get the Zulus to, to see themselves only in Zulu. And that's what the conflict was. And 30,000 people died in KwaZulu Natal as a result of people who had the Pan Africanist Congress, African National Congress, Azania People Congress mentality, and people who had the in Kata mentality, you know what I'm saying? In Kata. It's an Kata, you know, movement. We want to succeed from South Africa and create a Zulu state. You got people out there now still trying to bring up uh, a, a, a Zulu nationalism. Who who benefits from Zulu nationalism other than the whites in South Africa trying to uh, tear South Africa apart? You know? Right. Who benefits from Zulu nationalism? You know, you got the chief. Now, now you got a conflict now between Malema and the Zulu chief Goodwill, whatever his name, the clown's name is, you know? Yeah, he, uh, it, it threatened each other back and forth, you know. The Zulu chief is a clown. Yeah, he's a clown, you know. All these guys sleep with young girls. And you got uh, Swaziland. All these people like that. So the, all these old men sleep with young girls. Well, that's that culture. That's another thing. That's the culture. That's the culture. That's the culture. So you, you sleep with underage girls. Well, who said they're underage? Well, we have standards. You know what I'm saying? We have. That's another thing. We have standards. A 13 year old girl is underage. I don't give a damn what you think. And if we have anything to do with it, you are not going to bring your dusty ass over there and sleep with no underage girl talking about, well, this is African and I'm African now. No, it don't work like that, Negro. You know, like I said, we have a PhD in dusty Negroism. You know what I'm saying? A dusty Negro will do anything to, uh, uh, to be dusty and basically uh, uh, justify it under whatever religion or cult or belief right. system that you think. You know, if, uh, if you, if you uh, basically... This is how it works, right? Uh, you got to mute. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. All right, but I'm right now. Like, this is how it usually works. Like, this is how it usually works. Hold on one second. If you, let me, uh, hold on. Let me, let me, man, where did the screen go? Go, go. I'm about to mute it. Just keep, oh, here we go. Just keep, keep, just keep going, go. I'm about to mute it. I just got to find okay. it. Um, okay. Just keep going. I'm trying to find it. Here we go. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Dusty uh, Negro. Uh, 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 oh, we're echoing. Okay. Dusty Negroism goes something like this, right? If you're a freak, you're into pornography and everything like that, right? That's what you do, right? You feel uh, ashamed of what you do and what you are, right? So what you do is you go find a so-called African culture that basically uh, 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 thinks. So you talk about raising your vibration, you know what I'm saying? Sexual energy and all that stuff like that, you know? So you basically... Uh, 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 Create something. It, it's always a combination of zodiac, the Hindus, and uh, 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 Egyptian uh, uh, bear. Uh, 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 you always see these brothers and whatnot. They have always have uh, fine looking sisters and whatnot. You know, cornrows with an Egyptian wrap on and whatnot. You know, this that you know thing. In other words, basically, you can get your freak on 
and get your 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 belief system on at the same time. But the whole thing is, you know, for a fact is you just like that. If you believe in uh, herbal medicine and everything like that, you really just want to smoke some weed, herb and everything. But you want to basically talk about the most high. The most high is usually the guy with the most weed on him. Or not. You know, that's the most high. You know, it's dusty Negroism. You know what I'm saying? You want to do any, you want to justify anything you do under the guise of whatever cult or whatever uh, uh, spirituality. That's another thing, spirituality that you talk about. Now, I'm not knocking spirituality, but you got to look, always look behind whoever is talking to you about spirituality. Listen to them very carefully and everything like that. Listen to them uh, uh, talk. When they start talking about sex and they start talking about drug use, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah, another one thing is this. Well, polygamy was practiced in Africa. Like, no, you just want to get your freak on. You know what I'm saying? You want to have a justification for having seven women in the crib, which you can't afford, you know, and everything like that. Okay, let's say you want you believe in polygamy, right? What if all, what, all those women want to get a divorce? Let's say, let's say, uh, uh, let's say you're not just you work like uh, half a million dollars, right? You got to work at half a million dollars. And these people want to uh, basically. Uh, 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 these women say, you know something, I want out of the marriage, right? Uh, is she allowed to leave the marriage, right? Well, so when polygamy was practiced, women were near another property. Once you got their dowry from their family and everything, like that woman was yours. She wasn't going anyplace unless you sold her to somebody else, pawned over somebody else. So in the modern world, how would polygamy work? You know? So in other words, basically, if she says she wants a divorce, and let's say you're legally married to her and everything like that, she could Technically, take whatever uh, assets you have, half of every, half, as you go. Then the next one leaves, she's taking another half, and you're left with nothing. So tell me how my people, you know something? Oh, I never really thought about it like that. Of course not. You're thinking with your penis, you know what I'm saying? And you're coming into a movement that with nefarious ideas about what you what is. You basically aren't really a pan African. You're not really a nationalist or anything. You are a freak, and you want to get your freak on. Go right ahead, but leave this movement alone. You know what I'm saying? Leave this movie alone because it's not going to work for you. We live in a freaking modern world. Everybody wants to justify everything over culture. You know, I don't want to call my culture. I want to change my culture one night. Okay, go right ahead. You want to marry five wives and everything? Go right ahead. But guess what? When uh, you go to court, you know what I'm saying? The judge is going to give uh, 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 her half your assets. You uh, uh, basically, you don't like uh, uh, obeying trap. You're not traveling on the road, driving the road. You're traveling. You don't have to obey the uh, laws of the uh, road and everything like that because uh, some treaty of 1870, whatever, between the governor of Morocco and uh, the United I'm States. A I'm a Moor. You're a Moor, so they gave you treaty to travel throughout the United States. And, and without, and without, right a, here. without a tag, without a driver's okay. license. Not and then you had dudes out there, you had dudes out there selling. Uh, these drivers, I got my drive papers right here. You got to be. The cops look at the guy like, you know, it's, and the cops are sitting there like, I guess he's trying to keep a straight face. He says, see, I got these papers right here. You will have no right to arrest me. And just say, and the dudes be dead serious. It's because these dudes, like I said, you got too many, black America is full of too many con men and predators that prey on vulnerable, ignorant black people. You know what I'm saying? And so, therefore, instead of attacking those people that are using black people and misleading those other people, misleading people, why? Because what they're doing is causing people to go to jail. You know, what I'm saying they, 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 they want to attack us. They want to freaking attack us. You know, what I'm saying you want to attack us. You know, what I'm saying because you might be butthurt because we cracked a joke on you or something like that. Well, get used to the Negro. You know, what I'm saying I got nothing but jokes for y'all. You know, so the bottom line, you want to attack us. We're doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Everything we do is right. You know what I'm saying? Everything we do is honorable. But you want to attack us and everything like that. We're not taking nobody's money. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad Dinah's, uh allow us on the show and everything. We have a win-win situation. You know what I'm saying? He's broadening our horizons and everything like that, and he's building a circle of who. You know what I'm saying? So the bottom line is a thing. We knew we cannot build this organization but based on the toxicity and the controversy of what we're talking about and everything. We knew that people were going to try to use that against us and everything. Oh, you guys are saying, you know, no. There's going to be a time where we are going to take money, but that's years off from now. But that's not right. what we're doing and, right now. And, and, and I'm happy for that that you and Hold Up and uh, Bell Thanos, that you guys come on uh, come on here as well. Yeah, we, we want to build this guy because what, what Dinah's one day, 
is going to be the, the next Rupert Murdoch and everything one day. And we're going to ride along with them. You know what I'm saying? You know, we do not have this sort of talk and thinking, you know, uh, examining. No one talks this thorough about Africa and everything. And, and most of the people who talk about Africa listen to this show because I see a lot of our talking points out there. You know, it's gotten sharper over the last. I'm not surprised. Like on the Internet, it's not racism, white supremacy. People are getting more know how to get more specific and detail. In order for you to get specific and detail, you have to read a book once in a while. You can't just say racism, white supremacy, and there's some white man sitting up there with a gray beard, pushing a button, and everything like that. You know, just any other thing. You can't blame everything on a uh, uh, proposition. Was it a uh, memorandum forty six? Yo, somebody asked me the other day, color. Yo, did you hear about memorandum forty six? You know what I'm saying? Yo, I tell you, I like, dude. Let me tell you something, right? They can have memorandum forty six. Memorandum 56, Memorandum 66, they can have a Memorandum 10,066. Nothing is going to stop the BAIO. Nothing. They can try everything in the thing. We are not going to be stopped. You know what I'm saying? This little puny system they call white supremacy is nothing to us. You know what I'm saying? You know, nothing to us. We're going to crush this whole system. So the bottom line, they can try everything they want. You know what I'm saying? And we're not going to fail. We're going to succeed. We don't believe in failure. Failure is not an option. So when you say stuff like coin teleport and everything, what you do know is you don't really have a plan to succeed, you know, and you're reckless and you're just out here doing all kinds of nefarious stuff and everything. And then when you do fold and everything, you're going to blame it on coin teleport. But instead of taking responsibility for your ignorance and your incompetence, you know what I'm saying, and your lack of really love for your people and everything like that, that's why you're going to fail. But since we're not doing that, we're like we're on a we're growing, we're on a track to fail. You guys want to trip us, try to trip us up, but it's not going to work. Everything you say against us always bring people to us and say, you know something? People are talking stuff about you guys, man. I looked, we saw your website. I listened to some of your radio shows. My God, man. What, this is, I've never heard anything like this in my life. So you guys keep talking. The more you talk about us, the more people come and join us, and we get strong members. I mean strong members. We get engineers, IT people, people. When we set this up, I know holding on doubt it what I was saying. I said, look. There are black people out there with all kinds of skills. I remember somebody said this. Yeah, I don't know who it was. I'm not gonna say say who it was. I can't remember this. Somebody said somebody popular in there said, "Well, black people ain't got no skills out there, whatever." Like we don't got no skills. somebody. Somebody said that, and I said to myself, "Is this guy really serious?" You know what I'm saying? He said black people ain't got no skills, whatever like that. I don't know if it was Vet Cardinal, whatever like that. But I said, you know, I know from where I'm living where I live at. Black people got all kinds of skills, education. And it they, was probably a Vet Cornell. Yeah, and so I'm like, are you kidding me? I know for the fact that a lot of black people out there got education like you wouldn't believe. I had a client just now yesterday, right? I had a client went to his house and everything, and I met his um, uh, his uh, his uh, uh, cousin. He's 77 years old. This old lady. She said she was basically working in Norfolk State. She's a school teacher, a retired school teacher. And she said she was work. She worked in Norfolk State as a vendor. She's a, uh, uh, I think, uh, one of the uh, sorority alumni, whatever like that. I said, it's so honored to meet you, man. So why don't you go? Why don't you go on a cruise with us? You know, just any other thing with her church. I said, I'll think about it, right? So anyway, uh, uh, she was basically saying, yeah, yeah, I've been with Norfolk State, being a vendor there before since 1967, before I was born. I was like, dang, that's a long time. And she was just so taken in by me and everything. And I said to myself, and the way she talked and everything, I said, you born and raised in Norfolk, yeah. And she's an educator. She sits on different. different edu I said, I said to myself, I said, we have people in the Black America like you won't believe. You know what I'm saying? Don't discount. And then the client I was talking to, he said, his daughter, beautiful girl. He said, just graduated from Howard University. You know what I'm saying? He said, he, him and his wife were married. Fifth his wife just died a few months ago, so he's down from Connecticut. He said he's living with his cousin. He said, he said his cousin said, well, sell the house and move down here with us. You know. You know, that we're family. Let's live together. You know, he said. He said, man. So him and I, him and I, are, uh, gonna go bowling and everything. Older brother. So he's got a lot of knowledge and everything. I want to find out where I can learn from. Him. You know what I'm saying? He said, we'll go bowling. I said, yeah, let's get together, go bowling sometime. You know what I'm saying? He's my client. You know. But uh, uh, so anyway, basically, what I'm saying is this: there is a treasure trove of black people in Black America that got experiences, life experiences, and everything that the BAIO needs. You know what I'm saying? All you need to do is provide a home for people to come and be with like-minded people. You know, people always think that we're always shucking and jiving, we're always hipping and hopping. You know what I'm saying? We're always uh, twerking 
and we're all this ignorant stuff. World Star Hip Hop does not represent Black America, you know. And the real, this is sad. Ralph Ellison made a, a, a book. Remember his book, uh, The Invisible Man. You know, the bottom line is, you know, the bottom line is, the Black America. The worst thing about being Black America, being in Black America, is being invisible. You know what I'm saying? We never see ourselves manifested on television. Everything, true representation of ourselves manifested on television and uh, and uh, and uh, stuff like that. Somebody else always controls our narrative, right? If nothing else you learn from us is this, is that what we see in black America, the uh, stuff like that does not represent like, the views of black America. You have these straw man arguments. I tell, and I had... Uh, I was kicked off uh, uh, a lot of right wing. See, a lot of right wing people and everything. They want no part of us, the BAO and people uh, in us. They won't debate us. They won't come near us and everything because we don't. They don't hold the Trump card with us. You know what the Trump card is? Well, if you don't like it, go back to Africa. <laughs> they can't say that to us, man. You know they can't say that to us. You know what I'm saying? They can't say that to us. You know, and when you tell them first off, look, man. First off. When you see black America, what you're seeing is a crime scene. What do you mean, Carl? What do you mean by a crime scene? I should not be here right now. The fact that I'm sitting in America speaking English right now, in America, no matter how successful I am, whatever like that, it's a crime scene. We mean crime scene. I mean, every group of people on this earth, if they have an identity, that's another thing you want to take away from us, is our identity. Look, the bottom line is this. I'm an African-American slave descendant. That's who I am. You know what I'm saying? That's my first and foremost identity. You know what I'm saying? Now, we can, I can link with my Nigerian brothers, my Ghanaian brothers, and everything, but I'm African American first. I'm going to pay homage to my ancestors who suffered in this country and everything like that, made me who I am. That comes first. And then we can talk about unity from position of strength. Now, we tried it before where we're going to forget about our heritage and everything, and Africans didn't reciprocate. When they have numbers on their side, Dinus, right? When the indigenous people of Africa have numbers on their side, Pan African goes out the door. I had Nigerians tell me and said, "Look, man, why are we do? Why are we? Uh, they call uh, Pan Africans and talk like Black Union Ebonics, you know? Why are we listen to these Ebonical Negro uh, people from America tell us about unity and everything? What they do? And then rightfully so, that they're like, that's not my experience. I don't know about no KKK or slavery. You know what I'm saying? We're, most Africans don't even know about slavery." Everything we do is because we have a history from slavery. Our experience is how the African American thing. We can't expect to impose that on the majority of Africa and everything because that's not their experience. They can learn from us and everything. We can understand their experience and everything. We get pain and suffering and everything. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that, okay, some groups of Africans don't like other groups of Africans. We can be the bridge to bring people together. I think the movie Black Panther was an excellent idea for that. You know what I'm saying? See how we brought all different black people together, you know what I'm saying, for a project like that? Imagine if we had Black Panther as far as business and industrial consortium across the continent and across the world, Dinus. You know, which everybody respected each other's uh, thing. You had the Killmonger type. He was representing the African American. You know what I'm saying? You had people that represent Zulu, Kosa, and different tribes in uh, different Africa and stuff like that. And so the bottom line is this. And that was a tribute to our collective existence. So we all basically could look at the movie Black Panther and say, you know, I see some some of stuff. And people like uh, 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 Hogan said, college sound tribal is not. That's not me. See, that's another thing. If an African American says I'm African American, this that you thing, know, we're tribals. That's not me. Tribals means uh, uh, that I, it ends right there. I'm only African American. I don't want to hear nothing else. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that's my launching point. That's who I am. You know what I'm saying? That's not, you know, I see, are they being, is, is uh, Hogan K being uh, uh, funny, facetious, or is he being disingenuous, or is he just he pulling might, my he leg? Might, he, might, he, might, uh, he might be serious. You know, I mean, I mean, no matter what I say, Dinus, no matter how much I put it, you know what I'm saying? Just, I get again, like I said, like, like, again, like I said earlier, you, many of you are criticized for not going to Africa. I'm criticized for going. Yeah, you were going, go and dying. You did the thing. When you came back from Nigeria, man, I knew they, they were coming for your head, man, you know? <laughs> you know, the thing where actually went over there, and he met with an African-American that was there for 30 years, talking about building a monorail. I mean, Dinah, you probably got these Negroes having nightmares right now, you know? 
The Nick Rose are having a nightmare. They're sitting there going, dag, man. Yo, he actually went over there. You know, and they talk about business and stuff like that. Only thing is, this thing is going to keep growing. Why? Because it was already there. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that the difference between African Americans and Nigerians, we're going to work our problems out. You know what I'm saying? I have that. Uh, uh, if, if you're dealing with a smart, intelligent Nigerians, they'll work it out. What you have is a lot of Nigerian peons. You know what I'm saying? Nigeria peons. You know, these are people that live from here to London and they're living in Australia and everything like that. They're living all over the world. They're, they're, they're hanging out in clubs, uh, drinking their little fruity liquor drinks and everything, chasing white chicks and Chinese chicks and everything like that. And uh, and the bottom line is this. They're all over the world chasing white chicks and everything like that, trying to get paid, getting into trouble and everything like that. But yet when they, they're always on the social media site, we Nigerians, uh, I'm like, yo, if you want to be a Nigerian, go back to Igbo land and build something. You know, go back. Beautiful Calabar. That place is a paradise. They built a Tenobu uh, movie studios. You know what I'm saying? They were trying to make t uh, Tanaba something like a mini Hollywood. But yet Nigerians would rather go to Dubai. They would rather spend their money going to Dubai than basically enjoy their own land. But the African American says, we want a land of our own that we want to enjoy. No, you can't have that. You know, so in other words, Africans, remember I did the show? Uh, to Africans, uh, African, Af to Africa, African Americans. To Africa, Africa, uh, uh, Africa and heaven to African Americans held the Africans. We're, we we have vision. We said, well, if we had this, we had that, man, in our own beautiful land like that. Oh my God, we love it. But Africans are like they always still in the internet. How are they gonna get to America? How are they gonna get their visa? You know what I'm saying? How are they gonna get here? How are they gonna... I'm like, dude, you have the land. China, everybody else trying to get in your continent, and you're trying to get out. But the moment we say, okay, well, we got a vision, we're we'll just coming to Africa. Well. If, let me tell you something. If every African country had a leader like Lee Kuan Yew and Paul Kagame and whatnot, probably there wouldn't probably be a desire for African Americans to have a nation state. I, I'm, I'm dead, dead serious. But because it's not, we have Zambia, who will basically look like it might be going under receivership with China, right? You got 60 billion. What you, let's talk about that 60 billion dollars, right? That's not including the billions China already gave, right? See, if you think China's giving that money away for nothing, you are got to be uh, crazy. And sixty million billion dollars is a lot in Africa. That's really nothing to tell you the truth. You know, it's not a lot of money. Right. It's not a lot right. of money. But people say, well, they build. What can you really build with sixty billion dollars if you don't have a really comprehensive plan to build a unified infrastructure and education? You know, if you're not basically saying how we're going to harness the skills of the diaspora, you know, and create education and stuff like that. And create a whole new culture of accountability and ending corruption and a forward plan, you know, a forward plan with benchmarks and and oversight and all the stuff like that. We're gonna do all that stuff on a coordinated level, and every country agrees to that and everything like that. Like the the Asians did with the Bandung Conference, where they basically unify Asia into one trading region, the ASEAN nation into one trading region. If that's not on the table, every African country. Is just there to get their little piece of the pie and loot and everything. I'm telling you right now, Africa is going to be on the hook for that for that money, you know. So you know, it's just a uh, um, let's see support the answer. It says African, the crystal African Americans, the African general, probably Nigerian. The man has streamed. I don't know. You know, we got any, any questions? Uh, let's see. I'm not uh, holding case. I'm not being disingenuous. I. And I didn't mean in a bad way, but I just I want you to feel what it means to be tribal. I think you belong to a group. We are part of a group, you know. Let me give you an example. You know, what I'm saying I'm not going to disparage. Yeah, you got one statement though. Are you you want, you want to hear it first, or you want to go finish? Oh your yeah, statement? yeah. Go ahead. No, oh, okay. Well, I want to finish, finish this. I said, look, there's nothing wrong with being part of a group. But well, my point is this: Why is it that African Americans are required to sacrifice their identity? For the idea of pan african africans keep their identity when they come here they're nigerian they're in their own clubs their own social networks they don't they stay with nigeria they have their own community and go I, look i'm part of like about 20 or 30 different liberian facebook groups they have not assimilated into black culture and american culture in the 20 something years that they've been here they're all about liberia and this that, and the other thing they're not assimilating and this that, and the other thing but when it comes to african americans we have to be open to everybody and everything I don't understand that. You know, 
uh, Kwame Kwame said, what's the requirement to join the BAL? Are you black? You know what I'm saying? Do you believe that African diasporas and African Americans should have a homeland state on the African continent? Should they basically have dual citizenship in the remaining African countries? Should African Americans basically have something of their own on the African continent, some sort of self rule, you know what I'm saying, autonomy? And should they be able to basically go to the continent or and uh, basically, you know, should African governments do lobby and have a, a, should we have a voice in the UN via through African states in America, in Africa, which we don't have right now? No country speaks on our behalf, you know? So if you basically believe African Americans and uh, Africans should work together to build Africa and everything, yeah, you can join the BAL. And it's about something physical and tangible. You know, we should have uh, an industry. We have no, and there's no real heavy industries on the African continent. That's a shame. You know, that means basically that $60 billion will be gone because Africans got to import machinery, construction uh, stuff, and construction material, building material, and stuff like that. The Chinese are going to get that money back when they, uh, when, uh, when, they, uh, when they have to sell them the same products that they uh, borrowed from them. And what was the question, Dinas? All right, the statement is, shout out to Marshall Morrison. Until black leadership puts forth actionable plans that black people can rally around and execute, I think all the talking is meaningless. Yeah. Well, we actually said the BAO, it's like, this is another thing. We at the BAO don't call ourselves leaders, but what we do is provide leadership. That's two different things, right? Leadership is basically stepping up and putting forth a vision, right? Being a role model, an example, and an advocate, an advocacy, you know what I'm saying, and due diligence that other people can follow. You know what I'm saying? People inbox me, email me all the time. Colin, what do you think about this? What do you think? People from all over inbox me all the time, you know what I'm saying, over, over the years. And I'm honored that people come to me with their opinions. You know what I'm saying? I'm honored about that. I don't I always answer people right back and everything, you know, it takes me a while. I'm not ignoring you. People inbox me all the time. What do you think about this? What do you think what happened over here? What do you think what happened over here? That's leadership. You know what I'm saying? That's not saying I'm a leader. A leader is somebody says, I'm a leader whether you like it or not. And I force myself and impose myself on you. Leadership is saying, I like what Kyle is doing, right? I'm an example. You know what I'm saying? I'm an example of what we do. What I talk about, the direction I lead people in, in my conversation, that's leadership. That's taking a leadership. The pan African movement failed because we lack leadership. We look to leaders. Not leadership. So the person you could have somebody, oh, he's a leader, a pan African. Then he veers off into something else, and you go follow him off a cliff. Same thing will happen with all these groups here. They always start off, oh yeah, he's bad. He said the other thing. Then they go off the cliff, or go off the deep end. You know, they lead you off the lead. Well, why? Because you, everyone has to know what the ultimate goal is: land, infrastructure, nationhood. Right? If someone's leading you towards that goal and that end, he is part of the leadership. You know. If he falls off, if Colin gets up to one day and says, you know something, I think I'm going to sting the Star Spangled Banner. Please freaking cut me off. You know what I'm saying? Please say, yo, Colin, you're going off the deep end. Why? Because the bottom line is at that point, you know, I've sold out. You know what I'm saying? I've sold you out. I'm only as leader as far as I can tell you the truth and guide you to the right direction. That's leadership. But I'm not a leader because I'm just a man. I'm fallible. I'm capable of making mistakes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're only human. So you have to know what it is that you want to do. And the ultimate goal right now is land infrastructure nationhood. Why? Because when you when we say land infrastructure nationhood, that tells the world that we're ready to engage our African motherland. You know what I'm saying? Because to have that land infrastructure nationhood, you're going to have to have connections with all the African countries in the world. All the uh, the black populations in the world, all the countries in Asia and everything, everybody has like so it's gonna be a new paradigm. Black America is gonna be a different place uh, uh, in a few years. No, we're not gonna be the same black. And we see that this happening now. Black people are becoming so detached from the American mainstream. There's nothing left. You tell me what's left. You had a black president in the White House for eight years. There's nothing left, folks. That's the best you're ever gonna do. And nothing happened. Nothing happened for black America in eight years. That's the best you're going to do. There's nothing left to happen in America. Only thing happened in America is this conundrum. Is there racism here? And what are we going to do about it? Let's have a conversation on race. You know, that's a favorite one. Let's have a conversation on race. You know, is racism, white supremacy here? 
And basically what they do is they sell. I'm taking shots at anybody. People will sell you books and tapes about history and uh, how ra bad racism is. And, uh, yeah, racism white supremacy. Just bad. You're miserable. I'm going to sell you a tape or a CD and everything like that. Go to my GoFundMe page and everything. We're going to get our misery on, you know, misery merchants. You know what I'm saying? So in other words, if you want to listen to the misery merchants, right, you want to buy books and tapes and everything like that. And we yeah, people tell me, you know, people tell me, a collar, man, you know what I'm saying? I think I, you know, I think I could debate you. I think I'm on your level, blah, blah, blah. Why? Why? I say, you know, so, bro, so why do you think that? Well, I got every book such as such read. So, in other words, basically, you just go in there, spending your pocket change, buying books and tapes and CDs. I read all these books. I read all that. So, what, what is your end game? What do you mean end game? So, out of all the books and tapes you read and everything, I just know that, yo, we fucked up. Racism, white supremacy. Okay, let's say all that. But how do we get, we can't get out of it. That's the whole thing. Now, the thing you heard that before. No, we can't get out of it. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, it's endemic. Racism, white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? It's a global force. The white man is Thanos. You know what I'm saying? The white man is Thanos, Santa Claus, uh, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, all wrapped in the Wiz, uh, from the Wizard of Oz. All wrapped up in one. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know what I'm saying? So the white man is Thanos, you know what I'm saying? With the infinity gauntlet. You know what I'm saying? No matter where you go, the most powerful being in the universe, no matter what you do, right. he's everywhere, gonna be there. Can't do anything. everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. There we go. The white man is Thanos. You know what I'm saying? You can't do nothing. He's gonna show up there, you know, and with the infinity and reality reality stones. You know, so the bottom line, the bottom line is this. That's what that's where we're at right now. So they what so what's your end game? There is no end game. So in other words, basically, well, what are you doing? Well, I got a YouTube channel. Oh, so in other words, basically, you have no plans or everything like that. So now you're going to be another YouTube star, and you're going to uh, uh, give you, uh, you we're going to be talking about how bad black women are all day. Uh, we're going to talk about how uh, black women shit, this, that, and the other thing. We're going to talk about that and all stuff like that. And the bottom line is this. Uh, if you like watching these videos for entertainment, that's one thing, right? But if you say I see these brothers getting passionate with this stuff, right? I'm like, yeah, you know, dude, man, it's like, where you have a life or something? That's all you do is sit back and wait for uh, your favorite YouTube star to start bashing black women all day, call them hood rats and all stuff like that. That's what you call uh, 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 that's 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 what it's at. You know, it's just it's just really sad. You know, yeah, you know, really really sad. You know, just really sad. So we got anything else, Dinos? No, we, we don't. I mean, we 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 covered everything. Let me see if there's any more. Uh, I got all these damn screens up. Let me see if uh, what's in the chat room. What's in the chat room? Any, any, any questions in the chat room, family? Everyone, thank you for joining us. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that like button. Don't be stingy with those likes. Um, no, nah, I mean, that's it. Just, uh, you know. Sure, you go go ahead and see if I see if I see anything. See, see, see mm -hmm. Uh let's see. So so when's Nigeria they will start exporting we all the weeds to go to Nigeria. Okay, yeah. That's really important, you know. Weed. Right. That's a dusty hey, 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 they, they, they we're we're treating weed like it's the reparations. Oh we yeah. oh, we we can sell weed now. So weed now, yeah, you know, so weed, you know, yeah. Get your high, get your get get your stoner on, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yes, dusty Negroism, you know. Uh somebody Baruti. Oh yeah, this is uh, my friend here, you know. Uh Baruti Katembo says, Mr. Jensen, why aren't continental Africans taught about the slavery? Oh, of course. Because uh, the continental African, let me say this, they basically have an educational system imported by the British. As much as I love Robert Bugatti, he was a black bridge. Your educational system, it tells you who you are. There has never been a modern pan-African curriculum. And you have black countries. They're still learning about the Queen of England and from a Europe-centric point of view. It's good to learn Western history and Chinese history and everything. But you mean to tell me you don't know, uh, uh, you don't think that millions of Africans across the Atlantic, you know why it's important to know about the African-American experience? Because the world view of Africa is based on the enslavement of African Americans. You can't go around the world. I'm going to say something that's very controversial right now. This is saying the world holds African Americans in somewhat better esteem 
than Africa. It's unfortunate. And most Africans know that. When you go to uh, Asia and everything, most Africans will say they're from the United States or the African American. Why? Because for the most part, black people in America, you know, because of the media and stuff like that, for the most part, are still look viewed favorably in Africa. It was like that in France. You know, when Africans uh, were there and black people that came over there in the, in the 20s, 30s, and 40s and everything like that, they were treated a little better than the, the people from the black people from the French colonies. You know what I'm saying? It was just the truth. You know? Now, the whole thing is this. Why? Because people had a respect for the fact that these people came out of slavery and they pulled themselves up. They gave, we gave the world so many scientists and inventors and all stuff like that. So there's been an interest to tear down the image of black America with negativity around the world in the eyes of Africans, in the eyes of people from around the world. It's a war on Africa. Somebody asked the idea about Liberia. Of course, they're going to make sure that the world thinks negatively about Liberia because it was has something to do with black America. Now, uh, the whole thing is this. As far as Africans leaving the continent, returning to the continent, the Africans, uh, 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 Americans going to Europe during World War II, fighting in World War II, the whole world was basically, uh, uh, most of the world uh, 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 view of Africa came from people, Africans, outside the continent. And what happened was after Kwame Nkrumah, right, during Kwame Nkrumah's time, right, the power shift was, was uh, the Pan-African shift began to shift towards the continent. You had uh, uh, Siko Torre, Amika Kabar, and all these other people on the continent, you know, uh, uh, Haile Selassie, you know, Patrice Lumumba, these were indigenously, Nelson Mandela, these were educated indigenous people and everything, and around them, uh, so, the, so therefore, the, uh, the emphasis on uh, global Pan-Africanism began to fade as each person, each leader, began to focus on their particular country, you know, and then it got to the extreme where you had dictators that rise with thought about only their country. And the whole idea of pan africa died all together. You know, so therefore, like I said, when it was outside of Africa, we looked at Africa oh, as big. Oh, 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 let me show you something. Let me show you something. Hold on, hold on. Speaking of yeah. Liberia, hold on, let me show you something. Let me share the screen. Hold on, hold on. You're going to love this. You're going to love this. Hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, Lord, Lord, we are. Oh, makes his soccer comeback. George, we are. Oh Lord, yeah, and they, like I said, man, hey, it makes it soccer. <laughs> the guy, the guy is a friggin' joke. You know what I'm saying? And this is what this is what happens. And I mean, so too long, right? This is what happens when you have pure democracy. You have an illiterate. You know what I'm saying? Running the country, which he doesn't know how to do. You know, this is what people want to happen to us. You know what I'm saying? They would love to have us, intelligent people, African Americans. The most intelligent, one of the most intelligent people that ever lived. Everything go to a place where you got people that run in countries that basically barely got third grade reading level, you know. And we're supposed to just bow and this that, you know. No, it don't work like that. It does not work like that. We'll visit and everything like that, but as far as like saying, okay, we got look, we live in America. look. Bottom line is, we've been here for four hundred years. We've been here four hundred years. We're pretty much established in America, but some of us want more. Someone want, do wants to be part of do want to be part of Africa. And bottom line is, we're going to connect with countries that want to do better. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, but Liberia, like my Liberian friends, I love you. You know what I'm saying? But Liberia is not one of them. You know what I'm saying? And you can't say I don't like, like Liberia because I wrote a, like, a novel about Liberia. My girlfriend's Liberian. You know what I'm saying? But the bottom line is, I would not in a million years tell somebody that's the country you need to go to. Never in a million years. You know, like we said on the show the other day, I said there has to be a good transition. Countries like Rwanda is doing pretty well, you know what I'm saying? Doing really well. I love the leadership of Paul Kagame. Botswana's a good country. Namibia's a good country, you know what I'm saying? Nigeria's going to be a good country, you know, it gets itself together just by the mere fact of this uh, population. So, several countries and everything we're talking about, we want to build with, you know, see what we can do together. But like I said, not every African country is the same. You know what I'm saying? Not every African country is the same. You know, we want to, uh, you know, to build with people that want to be educated and want to go, uh, go far in life. You know what I'm saying? We got ideas. You know, I believe in government accountability. I, I, I really believe in that. You know, most of us do not know what it's like to, to, to uh, uh, one day sit in your house and the electricity goes out and it's out for a month. And then you try to call about the power going on and everything like that. You can't get an answer. So for the next two weeks, your electricity is out. 
because they got ships of part in from overseas. You know, this stuff you don't even think about here. The power goes out in, in, uh, here. Uh, if you understand about uh, how infrastructure works, the water system, every five blocks in your neighborhood has a water pump. You probably don't even know what it is. Little tall, little building. You probably never knew what it was. It's a water, it's a water pump. That was that's what pumps water into your house. If the elect, some of them have a backup generator, right? Given that, but for the most part, if that goes out and everything, you're not going to get any fresh water. You're not going to have any plumbing. And how would how would that last for like this? So all this stuff like that that you not even aware of because you live in a modern society that you basically got to be cognizant of when you talk about going to the African continent. A lot of stuff like that you're not going to have. You know, if you're willing to live without that stuff and everything like that, modernization and everything. And then the question may ask is, why do we have to sacrifice modernization just to live in Africa? Why can't we have both? You know, you got a whole vast continent. We told it was the richest continent in the world. Why can't we even have the minimal basic uh, modern life? You know, we don't have, we'll have to have uh, big cars. But can we have a Singapore style uh, system with public transportation and everything? Look at Japan. Japan has the best public transportation system in the world. You know, Tokyo, how many people live in Tokyo? 40 million people in Tokyo. You know, why can't African countries do this? You know, so the bottom line is, hey, look, you know, so we have to work together. You know, we have to keep our standards up and we have to say, okay, this is what we want. And uh, when countries are doing well, like Rwanda, we should do a show on Rwanda. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's remarkable of what that country did. And so, like I said, when people say, well, you're too hard. Look, if Rwanda could do it, right, after losing 400,000 people, right, if they could come back in 20 years and produce one of the most beautiful cities on earth and everything, Kigali, and the people are peaceful and clean and, and prosperous, any African country could do it if you have the right leadership. You know what I'm saying? If you have the right leadership. If you're not so focused on elections and everybody getting uh, uh, in the office and everything like that, you have a leader that basically says it's more important to build a country than to keep voting every two years. There was, wasn't there uh, somebody that said said in Uganda said uh, elections are a waste of money. We should be building infrastructure. It was a uh, 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 somebody it was a Uganda or Kenya, one of them. A lady got up and said, "Why are we spend all this money on these stupid elections? Well, we could be taking that money and building infrastructure. You know, and that's the case. We basically it's black people." Feel that like, uh, wasting all this money on having these elections, in, which is only validating nepotism and mob rule, and everything. Whoever has the most tribesmen and gives out the most uh, rice and chicken is going to get the votes. You know that's what passes for democracy. You know, called rice bowl, uh, rice bowl, uh, chicken and rice bowl politics or belly driven politics. You know, you basically uh, whoever gives you the right, uh, the most rice, gets your vote. So you know, like I said, so there's a lot of stuff. Uh, 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 things. So I said, Liberia can rehab by world they need media, but because African Americans in Liberia's history is quite dramatic and full of distrust. Oh yeah, I know that. But like I said, it's not so much distrust. There's an awful lot of Liberians who really hate us. You know what I'm saying there's a lot of them like us, but a majority of them, I'm sorry, just I just it just what it is what it is. You know, I don't know what we did we do to people and everything like that. I don't know why people hate us, but the bottom line is, you know, we want to basically only build with people that love us. You know. And that's the whole idea of us having a nation wrong. We only want to be around people that love us. I was going to say, Carl, uh, I, we'll, we'll go ahead and finish, but we'll go ahead and uh, start closing out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you want to join us, uh, uh, find me. You know, I don't find me on Facebook, folks. You know, say I'm through with Facebook. You know, I hate Facebook. You know, I can't wait till Facebook uh, flops. You know, if you want to talk to me and everything, you want to talk to the BAIO. Join us on the name site. You know, as the time comes on, you know, I'm not going to go on Facebook and Twitter and everything. I hate those institutions. I especially hate Facebook and everything. I got suspended five times this year already. You know what I'm saying? I, it's a time I, I just log in and everything, and they suspend me for nothing, just for the hell of it. You know, so I'm on a 30 day suspension on Facebook. You know, it's also, also, like I said, so screw Facebook. Go to our, uh, oh, somebody say, oh, you have no truth about Rwanda. Please, I guess uh, we this, we'll, we'll do a separate show on Rwanda. Oh, Wanda. shut up! Shut up! Shut up! This is another thing. We'll do a separate. We'll do a separate show you on have a head, You have a country, right? That's basically monetizing Cote, do a business transaction, monetizing Cote, building the infrastructure, has peace and quiet and everything like that. Peace and quiet and uh, progress and beautiful city and everything. Lose, 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 truth, but the truth is, the truth is, one day 
You freaking traders, you traders. I know. I, I think I know who this this guy is. Jones, Tolo, Tyler, whatever like that. You know, he's, I've seen him before. You know, on on YouTube, I've seen him before. YouTube with his rants about the Ivory Coast. I, you know, he just said. Bottom line is this: uh, 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 call, uh, he kills your kind for sport. Okay, yeah, okay, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Well, but notice how this guy hasn't said anything about uh, Bobby Wine in uh, in uh, Uganda. You know what I'm saying? Bobby Wine sitting uh, uh, sick right now, killed, almost killed by Ugandan police because he dared to talk about how we. Can, uh, like, but you don't say nothing about Bobby Wine, you know? Because I know Mr. Jones Kalo, K- you are you are a plant and a traitor. You know what I'm saying? You won't say nothing about what's going on in C-A-R, C-A-R-R. You'll say how Muslims and Christians are butchering each other, how the French uh, uh, puppet government is killing the English-speaking Cameroonians. Oh, that doesn't bother you. But the only person that you have, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 the only person you have in mind is Paul Fugami because you are jealous. That's all it is. This is what I mean by tribalist. This is what I mean by somebody who's a race traitor. You know what I'm saying? Instead of getting tenure right, why don't you talk about those Chinese that are freaking abusing the Kenyans? You know, like the Chinese call your president a monkey and everything like that. And the fact that you just imported one China, you should have threw them all out of China. You know what I'm saying? You got enough Kenyans to build your own railways. You know what I'm saying? You can go on YouTube and find out how to build a damn railway. You know what I'm saying? But you want to sit here and talk about wanting uh, uh, a volcano way to erupt. Okay, you try it. You try it. You try it, Negro. You know what I'm saying? I am so sick and tired of these people. There, every country in, uh, in the world, by the way, you've got these troublemakers out there who can't stand the fact that somebody is basically uh, uh, doing good. You know what I'm saying? You can't stand the fact, oh, it's going to try what, what happened when that. But notice how he didn't say anything about in neighboring Burundi. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The president gets shot and killed and everything like that. Corruption. So he doesn't say nothing about Burundi. You say nothing. Oh, let's, let's not talk about Burundi. Oh, no, nothing's going on in Burundi. Right okay, now. okay. We'll, we'll do a whole nother show. Okay, okay. I'm going to do a Saturday night. And you want to do Saturday? We'll go Saturday. I can't wait. I'll, I'll, put a, uh, I'll let you. I'm going to a birthday party Saturday. But I'll let you. Okay, know. yeah. Okay, all right. All right. Okay, all right. Oh, cool. But hey, okay. everyone, thank you so much for joining us, That's brother Kyle. Right. Hey, jo- join me on the join me on the Black African Infrastructure Organization. You know, I don't know if you put the link up there. Uh, I think yeah, I'll put it right, put it right yeah. Now. Join us on the Black uh, uh, African Infrastructure Organization. And uh, organization, and basically, uh, Paul Kagami is uh, has an iron fist, and I'm glad he's putting his foot up people's ass. You know what I'm saying? You need more Paul Kagamis. You know what I'm saying? You need more Paul Kagami. So I don't trust African democracy. I don't trust anything you guys say, Joe Kaiwo. You know what I'm saying? You don't deserve democracy. You deserve a foot up your ass. That's what you deserve. All right, cool. You know All, right, All right, All right, brothers. Good night, man. Thank, no you for hey, you know Thank you for joining us. You know search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, search for Huru um, dot com, Amazon dot com. Search name Dinah Samir. Also, go to uh, Dinah as well. Till next time, peace. Peace, brother.